Sarah Saltrick Meyer, um, and I am a web developer from New York, uh, specifically Brooklyn, home of uh, yeah, home of the world's finest JavaScript meetup, the very famous Brooklyn JS. Um, not to knock Borough JS, but uh, all right, do, 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 do. here we go. Uh, so, my computer is, uh-huh, uh-huh, oh, okay. Uh, you know, you expect a lot of things when you're about to do a talk. The last thing you expect is your uh, computer to just shut down on you. But these things happen. And... Okay. Yay! Woo! All right. Um, right back to it. Uh, so um, I'm going to talk basically about um, being the only engineer in a non-technical organization. And uh, you know, this could be because you're a consultant working with a company that um, has no technical expertise, or it could be because you are, you know, the the only engineer on salary at a company that maybe has like outsourced developers. Um, and I'm just going to explain a little bit about how I came to that position and what I did with it. Um, so, yeah, again, I'm Sarah Saltrick Meyer. Uh, you know, hit me up on Twitter, Meyerini. Um, and uh, so I started out um, as a developer at a tech company, a company where, like, more than 50% of the staff were software engineers. Um, and, you know, we were, we were a pretty cool web development company in, like, you know, 2013, so we were on that backbone in Rails, uh, you know, a tease and, uh, like, all about the, you know, monolithic MVC uh, single-page app. Um, and, you know, that, that's where I sort of grew up as an engineer. That's where I learned, like, best practices and where I, uh, you know, kind of absorbed... Um, what, what software engineering was, which was like constant refactoring, um, you know, always pushing for, for technical excellence, well-tested code, all the, all the good things that we come and talk about at, at conferences like this. Um, you know, and we had a particular kind of culture. It was very uh, video games. Like, you know, we didn't work at all on the day when Apple would do a developer conference because, <laughs> well, you know, there's things that are more important in life. Um, and I, I loved it there. But um, I, that was a company in Boston. And I really wanted to go back to New York, which is where I grew up. Um, so, you know, I, I did that, uh, sort of ran away, um, you know, took a job for the sake of taking a job, which um, was, you know, kind of a terrible idea in a sense, because I almost immediately got poached um, by the company of my dreams. It was a company that um, I really felt connected to the product, which wasn't so much a technical product, but just having the opportunity to work on it, um, I, couldn't, I couldn't turn it down. And I didn't turn it down. So in this non-technical organization, suddenly there was one technical person, and that was me. Um, so, you know, what, what did I do there, and what do you do there? Um, well, it was another single-page app, this time because it was 2014. We were onto Angular. Um, and, you know, we had a, an, it was an e-commerce site that had a big loading spinner uh, every time you, you got there. And um, I, I hated that. I thought that there was so much to be done to improve it. And um, so I wanted us to move, you know, to uh, server-side rendering of our, of our pages. I wanted us to um, get away from... Uh, you know, Angular and client-side rendering. Um, and that was like one of my first priorities, was looking through the, looking through the app, um, figuring out, you know, uh, what, the, what test coverage was necessary, um, and what, uh, you know, if, if there were better ways that um, we could be rendering our templates. Like anything that was in um, Haml C maybe should have been in Haml. Um, and, you know, um, a lot of what I did there because it was a, a non-technical organization again, we had print designers doing our web design, um, which resulted in some very beautiful pages. But, uh, you know, if you have ever fought the battle of, um, well, the, the mobile design looks like this, and you have elements A, B, and C, and then on the desktop designs, it is elements C, B, and A, 
uh, then you know of my struggle at this company. Um, you know, it was a lot of, gosh, well, we can make it look pretty at, uh, this, at this break point, and we can make it look pretty at this break point, but anywhere in between there, um, we are utterly screwed, and no one has considered this. Um, and also, you know, one of the things when you are at a non-technical company, you're probably not going to get to work on big projects, interesting projects, the kind of projects that get you up in the morning as an engineer. You know, when you're uh, taking something and building, um, building a computer, like a, a web framework that has never been, been built before. You're not solving problems that have never been solved before. You're building landing pages for, uh, to sell makeup. And um, I wanted to do that because that was the, I identified with that product. But um, it, wasn't, it wasn't engineering, it was web design. Um, and, you know, you, I think generally when you are the only person making these decisions, you, you don't get to choose, basically. Um, so, you know, what, how did I respond to this? I got more productive than I had ever been in my life before. I used to be a lazy developer, but, um, you know, like, I think a lot of us fall into software engineering because it's a, it's a pretty reliable line of work. Um, I responded to being the only person who could fix things by really trying to fix them. Um, getting up every day and, you know, working on weekends. Uh, and I also, um, we, had, we had lunch and learns at this company. Uh, I hosted about three or four lunch and learns on web development. I got, uh, you know, the social media manager and the executive assistant um, building their own personal websites in HTML and CSS. And this was about the most gratifying experience possible, was um, building empathy for software engineering by sort of making more of my kind around me. Um, so if you, if you have an opportunity to do that, this is possible, you know, maybe not for consultants who are working remotely, but definitely possible if you are a salaried employee working in the same physical location as these non-technical staff members. Um, you know, there's an engineer inside everyone just waiting to come out. Uh, and a lot of people recognize, you know, that engineering is sort of a, a better gig than the one that they may have. And there may be people like on your customer support team or on your uh, marketing team who really want what you have, which is the skills that got you into the, into the job that you have. Um, and, you know, seek them out and uh, use them. Um, so you're also now, when you are the only engineer, um, you're the only champion that technology has. Um, you know, if you come from a traditional engineering environment, whoever the uh, sort of top engineer is, you know, your CTO, your VP of engineering, um, that person's job, in addition to sort of making decisions and managing the day-to-day -day work of the department, um, they are always advocating for technology to, you know, your, your C-level team or your, your like, uh, owner of the business. Um, and, you know, so the, if you have a powerful CTO, then that's somebody who can take the time to say, well, we need to spend a week um, writing tests for this. We need to spend a month refactoring our, uh, you know, order service. Um, if you don't have somebody like that as a buffer between you and management, then you are suddenly the buffer. Um, you are both the engine and you are the buffer between the engine and what's trying to make the engine work. Um, so you need to, A, really, really work on your communication skills, and uh, B, you need to um, have a certain amount of, like, gravitas and weight within um, the company. Basically, that, uh, that upper management needs to trust you that you're not just fucking around when you say, um, I need more time to do this, uh, to do it right. And if they don't trust you, then you will not get that time and your project will suffer for it, um, pretty much inevitably. Um, on the other hand, there is a huge bright side in this, which is that, um, so if you are the only engineer, nobody's going to teach you how to be a better engineer at that company. Um, so much of what we do as engineers on a team is the kind of unacknowledged labor of tutoring other developers. And this happens pretty much automatically 
uh, when you are working next to somebody who does a similar thing to you. Even the most junior developer um, and the most senior developer, the, uh, the intersection, the Venn diagram of their knowledge is not the total sum of, of their knowledge. The two people together know more than any one person could. Um, and, you know, so that basically by osmosis, by turning to somebody and saying, you know, hey, how do I do this? And obviously through things like, um, you know, your, your Slack, your, your, uh, your HipChat, your IRC, uh, you, you end up learning quite, quite a bit. Um, but when you're the only engineer, you don't have that. So maybe you get good at spreadsheets because spreadsheets are the way that your company communicates with each other. This was the case with me. You know, if it didn't exist in a spreadsheet, it wasn't real. <laughs> um, or maybe you get really good at emails, or maybe you um, try to spend a lot of time with that print designer who actually is really good at their job, really understands uh, color and uh, spacing in a way that you never will. But, you know, you can learn from them, you can learn from that, and you should, because it is, your, um, it is the, the most that you are going to get in terms of skill growth. Uh, you know, we've all been, been there, a sort of a solitary developer with Stack Overflow as their only real friend. Um, you always have Stack Overflow, but that's never where you're going to do most of your skill growth. Um, if you, for instance, want like I did to uh, learn how to deal with, um, you know, problems of scale, which are some of the most interesting at a web development company, um, then, your best chance, then you're not going to have the chance to do that um, as, as sort of a, a lone wolf. Um, anything that you can teach yourself, you will learn, and anything that you cannot be taught by other people, you will not learn. Um, so, you know, I felt very isolated a lot of the time until something happened to me, which is that I started going to meetups. Um, and the, the first time that I got on the Brooklyn JS uh, Slack channel, it, it was like a revelation. There were cat gifs flying back and forth again. Um, you know, there were like JavaScript and functional programming jokes, which are all terrible, but <laughs> well, you know, they're the jokes that we have and we love them. Um, so it, it turned out that as isolated as I felt there, I was really, you know, in, in the center of a, a much larger universe of developers in New York. Um, there, were, there were literally hundreds of people around me who I could go to for uh, the sense of community and uh, you know, sort of growth opportunities that I, I needed as a, as a developer. You know, um, when you experience stagnation, actually, even if you are in the middle of a large engineering team and you start to feel that you're becoming stagnated, well, guys, you know, go to, go to a meetup. You're already here, so I can't tell you to go to a conference. You've clearly learned that trick. But, um, you know, there, there are people out there who will actually, just for love and not for money, do the work of teaching you, do the work of supporting you, do the work of being your friend, um, which is work. And actually, when you're at a company, that's part of what you're getting paid to do, secretly. Um, and the, the last thing is that if, if you are the only engineer at a company, if you are the only uh, technical person, um, don't be scared to leave. Uh, I didn't get into that job because I wanted to be the only engineer at that company forever. I wanted there to be more of me. And when, um, so how do you get more engineers besides like, you know, uh, helping the social media manager build her own website? Um, you hire them. And one of the most important things when you're at a small company is whether you have any authority in the hiring process whether candidates that you bring um, to your bosses will be considered, and whether you get any um, you know, yes or no uh, input on candidates. Um, if you don't have either of those things, um, you should really consider sort of what kind of company and what kind of culture you are in. And that is the realization that slowly caught up to me. Um, when you know, after six months of being the only person there, I was still the only person there. It, um, I decided that it wasn't for me, after all, being the lone wolf. So uh, I left. I went to another en a big engineering company um, in New York, a 60-person developer team. Um, I'm happy to say that I have everything that I could want in a job there, but the 
knowledge of what will happen, the knowledge of what I will face if I ever go into this situation again. Uh, if I decide to start my own startup, if I decide again to um, you know, be the, the CTO or the, the founding technical uh, member of a team, uh, it's all going to happen again. The struggles are going to be the same, and in some cases, they're going to even be worse. But I know what they are now, so I'm not scared. Thank you.